you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Clean water is critical for the health and the safety of our communities and our families. Our local businesses, farmers, our economy depend on clean water for their success and their prosperity. House Democrats have a proud and successful history supporting clean water. House Democrats have championed investments in our nation's water and wastewater infrastructure systems, ensuring that all communities can trust in the safety of the water they drink and the treatment of the wastewater they produce. Last Congress, House Democrats provided historic bipartisan investment in our nation's infrastructure through the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. Specifically for clean water, the BIL invests almost $13 billion in clean water infrastructure and is creating jobs in communities across the country. The BIL showed that what Congress can do when we focus on the needs of American families. And today, I would put to you that we are doing the opposite and putting polluters over people with this doomed veto override attempt. In my own state of Washington, we are defined by clean water, including the health of the Puget Sound and hundreds of crystal clear lakes and thousands of miles of rivers and streams that run through our state. My constituents know that rivers, streams, and the wetlands are intrinsically connected. Pollution that starts in one body of water does not stay put. House Democrats know we can protect clean water while providing certainty to do business uh, to, for, for businesses and for farmers and for everyone who, who depends upon clean water for their lives and livelihoods. This is especially true for the 117 million Americans who depend upon smaller streams as a source of drinking water at a time when many states continue to face historic droughts. Now, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle say they want clean water rules that are simple, clear, and easy to follow, and so do we. We agree on that. The Biden administration's clean water restoration rule does just that following the law and the science of protecting clean water while providing regulatory certainty and stability for everyone. Unfortunately, this resolution will do the opposite. So I applaud the administration's call for, uh, uh, for vetoing HJ Res 27. Now, the argument is that, that they want bright lines in the regulation of clean water, yet the only proposal that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle seem to support is the Navigable Waters Protection Rule of the previous administration, a proposal that removed federal protections on roughly half of the nation's wetlands and 70% of its rivers and streams. And that rule was rightly rejected by the federal court, not by this administration, but by the federal court in 2021 as fundamentally flawed and likely to cause serious environmental harm every day it remained in effect. Yet, despite their call for certainty, my colleagues have failed to recognize that passage of this resolution that is before us today would again leave Americans without a clear definition of waters of the United States. By taking away this clarity, this resolution brings back the very same uncertainty and ambiguity its supporters claim to be concerned about. And I, and I know they're concerned about that uh, uncertainty. This resolution will adversely impact farmers, ranchers, and developers by creating regulatory chaos and eliminating important exclusions that have been codified in this administration's rule to help water-dependent businesses and farmers understand and comply with the law. For example, because it prohibits the EPA from issuing substantially the same rule, this resolution means the elimination of two long-standing exclusions for wastewater treatment systems and prior converted croplands, exclusions that have been relied upon by communities, developers, industry, and farmers for decades. This resolution would also eliminate six new regulatory exclusions for features considered, quote, generally non-jurisdictional, end quote, including certain ditches, artificially irrigated areas, and artificial lakes or ponds. I ironically, this resolution will result in more uncertainty and more bodies of water being regulated than under the administration's proposal. You don't have to take my word for it. Just read the Congressional Budget Office report accompanying this resolution. It is right in there. Now, as I mentioned previously on this floor, in another debate on this issue, this propo the Biden proposal, this administration's proposal, will not adversely impact family farmers in this country, period. Why? That's because farmers are, by statute, largely exempt from the Clean Water Act regulation where less than 1% of all wetland permits relate to ag activities nationwide. Therefore, if a farm is engaged in normal farming, forestry, and ranching activity, that farm is exempt from regulation. The current proposal does not change that exemption. In short, this resolution still makes no sense. It invalidates the current administration's rule and all the clarifications and all the exceptions 
for business it contains in favor of a similarly structured but much less clear regulatory framework. It increases uncertainty and the likelihood for continued legal battles and gridlock, the opposite of what businesses and farmers are looking for. So I support this administration's efforts on clean water, both through the implementation of critical bipartisan infrastructure law investments in water infrastructure and its veto of this short-sighted resolution. This resolution represents a step backward for clean water, increases uncertainty for businesses, and doubles down on the infighting and on the chaos. So I urge my colleagues to continue to oppose this resolution and work towards real predictability for businesses that need it and clean water for communities that cannot survive without it. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the balance.